presented by Five Hour Energy. The state capital here in Madison. And the flag is uh, starting to fly a bit more briskly. The breeze is picking up. And uh, we understand there is some inclement weather that is headed this way. Hopefully it will hold off uh, for the duration of the game. But that's not what the radar is showing right now. Kanaki on third down. Landish hauling him down. The pass is away. And that'll bring up fourth and 11. And now the late flag coming to signify grounding. Intentional grounding. Offense, number three. Penalty, lost it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. And here's Landish, the linebacker. Looking like he's gonna blitz. Just beats the center, McAuliffe. Crossed his face, throws him out the way, gets after the quarterback. Again, it's the four-man rush by Wisconsin. If they can get there by with four and keeping seven in coverage, it's going to be tough for Bowling Green and Kanapke com to complete some of these balls on third and ten. The officials had to consult to, to see, make sure that that pass did not get back across the line of scrimmage, which it did not. From inside the five, the punt from Davidson. Chasing Doe. Back to his 26. Kenzel Doe with a nice cutback. He will have some room across midfield. And taken down at the 35, his second good punt return of the day. And again, it's the punter Davidson who's able to take him down. 38 yards on the return. Nice blocking. You can see untouched makes, makes a guy miss there, but then you know no one left. And again, he lets the punter get him. Now this one is on the sideline, a little tougher. But again, as a punt returner, you, you always want to uh, believe you can beat the punter, especially after throwing a nice move like this, yeah. making you know some of the more athletic guys miss in the open field. And then you can see these guys, their punt return team has, has done a nice job of hustling and blocking throughout the play all the way downfield. First down, it is Gordon again lining up as a receiver and going in motion. McAvoy wide open to his tight end, Sam Arneson. Touchdown, Badgers. Again, Melvin is the misdirection man. All eyes on Gordon and Arneson left alone. His first touchdown reception. PAT is good. And they go to the tight end for six. Wisconsin trying to open it up. And leading Bowling Green 21 to 10 on the touchdown pass McAvoy to Sam Arneson. Just underway here in the second quarter. Beth Mullins, Joey Galloway, Paul Carcaterra with you. Bowling Green fresh off its win last week against Indiana. Wisconsin coming off the bye. It'll be Andre Givens out of his own end zone. Breaking to the outside, across the 30, puts his head down and out to the 40. Back to the touchdown, Joey. Here's, here's Melvin Gordon in this situation. And then, and then here's, here's Turner and Locke, the linebacker and safety. If you let this play run, we talked about the respect that Melvin Gordon gets. Freeze it here, and here's our guys. Both guys are covering Melvin Gordon. I know Wisconsin wants to get Gordon into the game plan in the pass plays, but he's only caught four passes on the season. I think that Bowling Green is getting him too much respect. They bring up two guys, and it leaves Sam Arneson running down the sideline by himself because the effect that Melvin Gordon is having on the defense. 
And after hands it off to the touchdown scorer, Fred Coppett. So, so far today, Joey, Gordon had a nice block to spring McAvoy for the first touchdown. Melvin rushed a couple of yards for the second touchdown, and now the perfect decoy for the third Wisconsin score. Kanapke, second and nine, off the pump fake, looking deep, the one-handed grab hauled in by Ryan Burbrink. All the way down to the 26-yard line. Success again with the long ball. Outstanding catch by Burbrink. To catch a one-hand ball, usually you have to get your hand, your palm around the tip of the football. Burbrink does a nice job of snatching this ball and bringing it in. Off the pump fake again, Burbrink with the catch, diving for the marker. Derek Tindall. How about the catch by Burbrink? Could be a top 10 nominee, hauls it in. Well, yeah. And quickly to the line. It looked like Joey, he had it through the catch and then sliding along the ground, it was stripped loose. What do you think of that? You, uh, in my opinion, you have to finish the play. And I don't know that that play was finished. Now they ran the next play and, and, and moved past it, but I don't know that that play was finished enough to count that Starts as a catch. Timeout, Wisconsin. The first of the half. This is where uh, snapping the football every 18 seconds can help you out. The timeout for Wisconsin. They need some fresh legs now that they're backed up inside the red zone. Impressive drive as the tempo has been cranked up by the Falcons. According to the replay booth, we did hear from them, Joey, that they felt like he had completed the catch before the strip by Tyndall. Yeah, which is what I was trying to tell you uh, before <laughs> before we went to break. Um, but but honestly, if, if I'm Wisconsin, I would have been questioning this catch. Yeah. This because is if you tell time. me yeah, that, you, that you have to finish the fall, finish the play, um, that happens pretty quickly for that ball to come out. Herbrink three threat catches for 51 yards. Coppett is the offset tailback. Fred will get the carry inside the 10. Down to the seven. Chikwe Obashi with the tackle. Lewis, their top target is number one in white down at the bottom. The Wisconsin trying to hustle guys off the field. That's Vince Beagle in a full-on sprint to the sideline. I think they might only have 10 guys. Hey, my math is correct. 10 guys on the field. 
And they are Charge forced timeout, to take Wisconsin. another timeout as a result. Dave Aranda got the timeout in time. Beth, and you watch the first game versus, versus LSU. There are a number of times when, they, when the Wisconsin defense was not lined up when the ball was snapped. They were running guys around. And, and that's, a, that's a, an offense that at times isn't as fast as this Bowling Green offense. So you realize, and now it's a longer run because they're down inside the red zone. It's a longer run for these defenders to get onto the field. The, the offense stays out there. All of a sudden, it's a fire drill. We talked earlier, there's there's 25 Wisconsin guys standing on the field before they figure out which 11 are going to go on the field, and they just miscommunicated and only sent 10 out there. Top 10 defensively in total yards allowed. Bowling Green already close to 150 yards here in the first half. They bunch everybody up on the line, and now four wides to the left, and this time it's Bowling Green with the timeout Charge and timeout. <laughs> <Bowling> Babers, <laughs> was that a 4-1 Joey Galloway 40-yard sprint down the sideline? Look at him, not only make the call, but then finish all the way through into the end zone like a special teamer. The first year head coach. <laughs> Hands on his hips now. <laughs> <laughs> now he knows now how opposing defenses feel. <laughs> it's impressive how they are able. It's not just Dino, but it's also two offensive coordinators, Sterling Gilbert and Matt Maddox, who are both down on the sideline. When we asked them how they call the plays, they all just kind of smiled and said, it flows. Yeah, it just is, flows. That, that is top-notch secret. We tried all three coaches. None of them would <laughs> give us a hint. I tried the trainer. I tried the water boy. That, that is a well-kept secret. They show the same break out of their alignment. Lewis up top. Kanaki runs right into Landish. The linebacker blows up that play. The official coming over, the referee there saying, that's Mike Cannon saying, James, you got to go off for a play. So Babers calls the timeout so he can stay in here on third and goal. Kanapke looking right the whole way, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Wisconsin and Luburn Figaro, the true freshman. Looked like it may have ricocheted through the grasp of Derek Landish, and it goes 43 yards the other way. Beth, and I don't, I don't think that even if this ball didn't get ricocheted, I think it was picked off anyhow. That is a tough situation. You're in tight quarters. You're down in the red zone. You're looking to this right side. And you have one receiver. They had four defensive backs in the area. If it wasn't picked off, a game sideline warning on Wisconsin. That's a five-yard penalty. It will still be Wisconsin ball first down. Yeah, I think there's just too many guys in this area. If it wasn't Figaro, it's going to be somebody else picking this ball off. Yeah, you can see Hillary is back there. It, this is just too tight. It's too tight of an area to squeeze this ball into. Big moment for the true freshman with the pick. Everett, Massachusetts, and again, they hold inside the red zone and don't give up the touchdown. Badgers will try and make this a 14-point swing. Gordon with the cutback, running over a defensive back out to midfield. 13 yards for Melvin. Yeah, and there's a quick 13, making guys miss, the cutting ability. You look inside, then he bounces out. There's a question when you when you talk about yards gained, 
whether it's inside the tackles or outside the tackles, it's always hard to tell with Melvin Gordon because here's a play that's called inside the tackle, but because he has the ability to shift as quickly as he does, he bounces it outside, and we count that as outside yards. Gordon undercut right at the line of scrimmage. Nice push by I.J. Barima. Over the last two seasons for Gordon, a little bit more success on fewer carries going to the outside. Here is Melvin. Big burst up the middle. The cut at the 30. Gordon with the push off and the finish. Gordon making defenders miss the whole way and a good push from the O-line to spring him. As he goes over 100 yards already here in the first half with his second touchdown. And the PAT is no good. So off of the interception in the end zone, Wisconsin quickly heads the other way, and it's Gordon with the stiff arm to get into the end zone. Students can take part in here at the University of Wisconsin. They have opened things up thanks to Melvin Gordon with a 50-yard touchdown scamper, 27 to 10. Melvin has only carried the ball six times in the first half, but he is averaging over 17 yards per carry. And he's had a hand in all of their touchdowns, whether blocking or a decoy or running it himself, Joey. Beth, we talked about the vision. Look at this hole in the middle, and you would think that's where this ball is going to go. Melvin Gordon, that hole closes down, and Melvin Gordon has the ability to see the hole close, see the next hole, and then puts his foot in the ground and can shift his body over and get, have the burst to get through the next, the next gap in the defense. And again, that's what separates this kid from other running backs is the ability to go in between tackles, make guys miss, and then you see the stiff arm at the end is that extra burst of speed to get it to the end zone. Through his first two games, 178 yards. He's over 100 already today with yard, uh, rushes of 40 and 50 yards. And a costly turnover in the red zone for Bowling Green. Wisconsin takes advantage just over three minutes later. The pass caught by Ronnie Moore for a first down. Devin Galden with the stop. That last possession though, Joey, Bowling Green ran a little quicker tempo and they moved the ball right down the field. They did, and it started with getting a first down, which they did here, and we'll see how quickly they can run these plays now. Kanaki is flushed. And throws that one out of bounds. This is where the, the fast-paced offense, I guess, I, I don't want to say takes a break, but it slows it down. When they don't gain yards on first down, then all of a sudden, as you can see here now, it takes a little more time to figure out which play you want to call for second and 10 and then third and 10 because you need a perfect play. Now it's just not in a rhythm of trying to gain the five yards, the five yard clips here and there. And let's remember too, James Kanapke, this is just his third start. Matt Johnson was their scheduled starter who got hurt in their season opener and that one's almost picked off by Caputo. And a flag down right around where that pass landed. Matt Johnson was the starter in that opener out for the season with a hip Pass injury. Interference. Defense number four, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Second PI flag of the day against Wisconsin. Yeah, a little hole. Grab, grab his jersey early in the, in the route and then later on in the route. That's a nice call by the officials. Andrew Lewis had 16 catches in the game-winning touchdown against Indiana last week. And downfield intended for more, a little bit short with Caputo giving chase. You'd almost like to see Kanapke roll out, see a guy down there, 
and, and get his feet under him and throw this ball and, and be a little bit more accurate. You see he throws it off to one foot as he's, as he's going toward the sideline and the ball just carried right out of bounds. Take your time. You have a receiver that open, you have a little bit of time to get your feet under you and deliver a strike. That's a big play chance for Bowling Green. Second and ten. They get it quickly out to Green and nowhere to go. Caputo had him wrapped up immediately. And again, it sets up the third and long. And this is an area where Wisconsin on defense will have a chance to sub guys in. You can see him running guys. On Close down to figure out what is our perfect play for a third and ten. One for seven on third down today. It's coming up the middle, picked up by the O-line. Kanapke, though, running out of space. And the ball comes out, and the Badgers have it. Second straight possession where Kanapke turns it over. And it was Derek Landish with a big hit. Alec James with the recovery. And give Landish a lot of credit. He's been getting after the quarterback all day long. We saw him get in there for the sack the last series and forced the grounding. Here, he doesn't stop working, gets to the backfield. He's about five yards deep, has the ability to turn around, come back, get back in the play and cause a fumble. They got to figure out what to do with Landish if you're Bowling Green because he's been all over your quarterback. He's made plays. They got to block this kid. A teaching moment for the first year head coach and his starting quarterback. Yeah, he's saying hold on to the ball. That just squeeze the ball when you're in traffic. This is the freshman for Wisconsin, George Rushing. They are really high on the potential of that young man. And we'll remind you that ESPN brings you college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels down to the SEC for LSU and Mississippi State tonight in Death Valley at 7 Eastern. Also on Watch ESPN. Tigers, of course, beat Wisconsin in the season opener. That defense is allowing just eight points per game, while Mississippi State is scoring over 40 per game. Something's got to give tonight. McAvoy will keep on the option to the left. And he's got the first down. Here's a look at this week's rankings brought to you by Capital One and the AP Top Ten Poll. Well, you got uh, Alabama, Auburn, Texas A&M, LSU, and Ole Miss all in there right now. Alabama with a, a home game today against Florida. What do you think of the tie, Joe? You got them in your playoff right now? I don't. I have them out, and I think there's some question whether Ole Miss is truly a top ten team. Mississippi State, if you put their resumes next to each other, they're very similar. Mississippi State's going to have a chance to make a statement tonight versus LSU. McAvoy with time to go down field and complete. There was contact and no fly. And I think it's a good no call, Beth. I think, you know, the defender is looking back. I think Hunter has his eyes on the quarterback, his eyes on the football, and he's coming up trying to make a play on this football, not looking at the receiver. I, I don't think there's an interference call there. I know McAvoy would like to have this one back. He, he has a chance if he throws this ball out there. And again, we've seen this a number of times today on both sides of the football, whether it's McAvoy or, or Kanapke, not throwing the ball out far enough in this situation, if he leads Erickson with this football, they have a chance to get a long touchdown, but he throws it behind him and lets Hunter get back into play. Gordon, the deep back in the eye, a fumble on the snap. Second time that's happened today. McAvoy will make do. McAvoy's done a nice job of, of athletically making plays after the play starts off the wrong way. This one's on the ground. He still finds a way to gain six yards. We saw earlier the running back went the wrong way or McAvoy went the wrong way. We don't know. What we do know is McAvoy turned around to pitch it. <laughs> the no phantom option. There, and he still had the ability to get around the edge, and we've seen him get into the end zone. McAvoy is a, is a big quarterback at 6'6", 222, but boy, is he very athletic out in the open field. 24-yard touchdown run to open the scoring today. He now has seven carries for 67 yards. The give is Clement. Oh, 
Tanner McAvoy beating out Joel Stavi in the preseason. This is a guy that was playing defense last year. It's been quite a road to get here for McAvoy. It's becoming a bit of a storyline over the last five or six years for quarterbacks here. From New Jersey, started out in the SEC, then out to Arizona for JUCO, transferred here to Wisconsin, played safety last year, and then they opened up the QB battle last spring, and he won it coming into the fall. We hand off to Clement to the 25. I think if you watch what McAvoy has done today, and, and they've wanted to progress with him, uh, missed a number of plays in the LSU game, couldn't, didn't have the ability to go downfield. Last week comes in, plays much better. You talked about his completion percentage uh, versus Western Illinois. And then today, we've seen a lot of athletic plays from McAvoy. We've seen him uh, in situations where things didn't quite work out, and he has shown the ability to be a playmaker for this team. And as long as you continue to be a playmaker, your credibility as a quarterback raises every single time your team sees you make a play. What a balance and a pretty spin from Melvin Gordon to pick up the first down. Nine more yards for Gordon. And I know Gordon and, and, and Clement and this, this running game for Wisconsin is happy to see McAvoy uh, continue to make plays. And again, you see Gordon here in between the tackles makes a guy miss great balance keeps his feet under him you know that that's why he's able to get right and left because of the balance with his feet under him and running the ball today they're already over 200 yards 222 to be exact and, and part of that is because McAvoy has been efficient offensively throwing the ball and it opens up the run game two tight end set play action McAvoy on a rollout incomplete trying to drop it off for Austin Trailer. May have gotten the case of the big eyes right there. He saw a touchdown waiting to happen out in front of him. Yeah, big Austin Trailer, about 250 pounds out there. If he would have got that ball in his hands, it didn't be. It was going to be interesting to see uh, who was going to stop the big fella from from getting that, you know, 17 yards into the end zone. But nice play by McAvoy. Delivers his ball, sidearm throw, but still puts it on the money. Ninth play of this drive that started back on their own 43. The pitch to Gordon, the burst to the outside, Gordon, stutter steps, dives down to the two. Daryl Hunter knocked him out, first and goal, Badgers. A lot of guys in the middle, uh, crowded in the middle for, for the Bowling Green defense, and Wisconsin's just taking advantage of that, getting the ball out on the edges, and again, open field, Melvin Gordon makes a guy miss and picks up a couple more yards. Two touchdown runs already in the half for Melvin Gordon. He is deep in the eye. Ramish now in motion. McAvoy rolling. Incomplete. He overthrew Trailer, who was wide open in the back of the end zone. Part of the problem with McAvoy is when he misses, he really misses. Uh, and, and this is a long, long foul ball here. You know, and, and he rolls out here, comes around the corner, and again, get get your feet under you. We talked about this with, with Kanapke yeah. rolling, and, and if you watch McAvoy in the first game of the season, he threw a lot of balls over guys' heads because he doesn't take the time to get his feet in, in a perfect position to throw this ball. There's no reason to keep drifting to your right. Just take your time to deliver a strike. Gordon, third touchdown of the day for Melvin. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Falcons and back-to-back -back scores for Wisconsin and Melvin Gordon. You can see big Sam Arneson again coming around the edge. Uh, Trent Dellinger coming around the corner. They're blocking these edges pretty good, something they wanted to improve on in this game. And the PAT is good. Wisconsin opening things up out of the studio for an update from Crick. That front line, a special group, Lou Allen, Costigan, and Havenstein, the fifth-year seniors that have really set the tone. And always a big moment for Pat 
Costigan and his family, his mother, courageously battling cancer. The whole team has rallied around Kyle and the Costigan family doing a great job up front as they have started to run all over the Falcons now for 239 yards in the first half. How about the NASCAR, Joey? I know you'll be watching the Sylvania 300 from New Hampshire. We are into the playoff, folks. Oh, yeah. We need, uh, we need the NFL to move their games. This 1 o'clock start of the race, the 1 o'clock games in the NFL. I mean, we're in the, we're in the chase here. And my man, Matt Kenseth, we're in Wisconsin. He's a Wisconsin guy. Kenseth country. Um, I expect him to run well tomorrow. But that, that 1 o'clock start for the NFL, is there any way we can work that around the NASCAR race? I, I'm guessing. It's tough, Beth. It is tough to catch the race and catch some football. I'm guessing presently, Joseph, they have bigger fish. Oh, they got other things going on. Landish, boy, we've mentioned his name an awful lot, and he comes up with the sack for the Badgers. Yeah, we, we've talked about Landish already. He's been all over the place. This time, this time he's just unblocked. When he's been blocked, they haven't been able to stop him, but unblocked, it's going to be extremely tough for Kanapke to get out of his way. Travis Green gets out across the 20, and the flag is down. A reminder, too, to this is an entirely new front seven this year for Wisconsin, ravaged by graduation. They've come out strong so far. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 72 and 57. Half the distance to the goal, replay second down. Bowling well, Green was hanging in there in the first quarter. Had a chance to take the lead at one point in the second quarter, hurt by the turnovers. This is where it gets scary for Bowling Green, especially in their defense, because if the offense can't get a first down or two, then defensively you start to, to feel that because you're tired, you're on the field, and you're playing Wisconsin with these huge offensive linemen, and all of a sudden you're getting a short break, you're back on the field, and they're pounding on you again. We've seen the open game, you open up the running game, you said they're, they're almost at 240 yards here in the first half. And if this defense has to come back on the field, I mean, they're getting worn down. And they have run an equal number of plays so far in the first half, 36 plays apiece. Bowling Green is used to running a lot more than the opposition. Keith Jackson with the catch gets out of bounds to stop the clock. 4.08 to go here in the first half. And again, off down. the field. Again, yeah. they, they get off the field defensively for Wisconsin. And you wonder, you know, how do you slow down, you know, these fast-paced offenses? You know, you worry about your defense getting a break. And these defensive coordinators will tell you, well, the way you get a break is you get off the field. You get a three and out. You stop them from getting the first down, then you get your break that way. You get off the field. And Wisconsin has done a nice job of doing that today. Fifth punt for Joe Davidson. This one inside his own 10. Kenzel Doe has had a couple of nice returns today for Wisconsin. They'll give it a go again. Flags are down as Doe is still on his feet. Out to the 33 yard line. 50-yard kick, five yards on the return. On the return, legal block in the back, receiving team number 12. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down Wisconsin. How about a halftime tease? What's coming up, Chris Cotter? Thank you, Chris. Well, let's get Joey's thoughts on early season rankings. I know they're great for fans, Joey, but uh, do we really even need them prior to the selection committee at the end of October when they come out with theirs? Well, I do College Football Live on Monday, if I can plug my the show here, 2.30 <laughs> on one of the ESPN networks. We need something to talk about. <laughs> so we need these rankings because, you know, we get in there and we talk who should be in our top four, who should be in the top ten, and it's just fun conversation for now until the committee puts out their rankings. 
comes the power game from Wisconsin. Gordon with another nice run. Spinning away from tacklers. Gordon down the far side and out across midfield. Hunter and Sutton both missed tackles trying to stop Gordon. More yards for Melvin. Yeah, and Sutton had a shot at him. Hunter had a shot at him in the secondary. Um, up front, you can understand the guys. We talked about the weight differential between the offensive line and defensive line. You, those guys are worn down at this point. Colvin not in there. And then you could see when he gets to the second level, there's just not very good tackling back there. Gordon has 158 yards. His career high is 216. McAvoy using Gordon for play action. Looking deep, and it's intercepted at the four-yard line. Nick Johnson with the pick. And tripped up at the 26-yard line. And I've never been one to disagree with a pass play because I it's like your throwing bread the ball. And, butter. and I your like butter. throwing the ball downfield. This is a bad decision. And whether it was the play call, whether it was the decision by McAvoy, the way you're running the ball at this point, there's two minutes and 30 seconds left. Uh, I would I would say run the football yeah. for for two reasons. It just keeps Bowling Green off the field, and this is pretty good coverage. Mm -hmm. So why take this chance? You're rolling along here, 34 to 10. Mm -hmm. Continue to run the ball the way you run it this entire quarter, and don't give Bowling Green the ball back. You've rushed for 267 yards already in the first half. That is now the third Badger giveaway. You know, Joey, uh, you're doing an unbelievable job, College Football Live, watching you Monday and Tuesday. But i got to ask you, every week, one of your top four drops, who are you putting the whammy on this week, buddy? Well, <laughs> you guys, uh, people were not satisfied with uh, the half a game suspension for Jameis Winston. So they went back in, and they suspended him for a whole game. I think that's going to make it tough for Florida State, who is in my top four. They've been uh, hanging around all season long. Now all of a sudden, it, it, their Heisman Trophy winner is not playing. That's going to give Clemson a, a, a chance to knock Florida State out of my top four. Wow. The streak continues. The Galloway whammy. The, it's been fun. It's like the SI cover jinx. Yeah, it's been fun to see him drop. Texas A&M just got in last week. Finally, I've been, yeah. I've been talking about them since that huge road win in the opening week. Yeah, well, I didn't have any room for them. I, I had, only had four. I only got to pick four. It was early. Third down and nine. Under two minutes to go in the half. Blitz coming. Landish is blocked. Kanapke's pass is away and over the head of Roger Lewis. Fourth down coming up. If you're on the selection committee, Joey, and Florida State loses, do you punish them for playing a game yes. without Winston? What if they yes. go the rest of the season undefeated? You, well, can, you can look back and say if you're missing your best player or if he's injured. I think there's two ways to the interpret problem. that. The, the problem, honestly, is their schedule is weak after Clemson. And I don't think they'll have enough of a signature win. What about Notre Dame and, and uh, Florida? Yeah, no, your team, um, I, I know you keep singing the praises of Notre Dame. We're going to find out what they are because they have one heck of a schedule coming up. Um, but I think that Florida State, because of the ACC not being as strong as some of these other conferences, it's, it's sort of like the Big Ten situation. It's tougher to get a signature win down the line if you're Florida State. So you lose tonight, and it's going to be tough to climb back up in there unless some teams lose some football games. Problem, too, is in the ACC, you lose to Clemson. You're, you might be in a fight just to get into the ACC championship game, much less the playoff, the college football playoff. Absolutely. And and I, I just think that, you know, you, you take this Jameis Winston situation into consideration what he's done since last yeah. season, all of the issues, and, and, you, and you factor that in, to when you look at this Florida State football team. McAvoy, he's going to kick. Look at the agility and the ability of McAvoy on the run. But it's going to come back. I think there was a hold. We're going to... Are they going to get the receiver, Erickson? Holding. 
Offense, number 86. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the ball. Replay first down. And again, you talk about the defensive flow going left with the play action pass and then downfield receiver. It right it, it's tough out there on the edges for receivers to block in, in all that space. And I, and I know I'm making excuses for receivers blocking because uh, it wasn't my it's favorite so thing to do. It's so to you. I yeah. understand But, that. I mean, that's a lot of space out there to block one of the better athletes on the field. Gets a little bit of jersey. Should be a little bit of leeway for, for receivers downfield. You well, because you're always you in the effort. open field, too, when you're doing it. Exactly. That's, and, and it's tough effort. to get leverage. Effort matters. Set him back first and 12 from inside the 30. And the pass underneath to Sam Arneson, the tight end, who's got a touchdown catch today. We'll stick around for Sam. Now McAvoy can run a little two-minute offense. Well protected. Nice catch, climbing the ladder to bring it down is the big guy again, Arneson. Senior out of Merrill, Wisconsin. 20-yard pickup. And this Sam Arneson is making a name for himself this season. Uh, it been much better in, the, in receiving the ball. And you can see today, he's pretty athletic and made some plays downfield. McAvoy on the run again. The slide to the 25. Arneson at 6'4 with the big stretch. You're able to get up. You can see the high pass by McAvoy. A lot of his balls tend to sail, but you got guys like Arneson at 6'4 that can get up at 245 pounds and go up and catch a ball like that. He's going to make your quarterback look good in a lot of those situations. Arneson with a touchdown catch. McAvoy, after that last run, is approaching 100 yards. His buddy Melvin Gordon is already well over 100. Today's sharp performance presented by Polaris. It started out poorly for Melvin. He coughed up the football for the first time in his career, but then has come back for three scores. Yeah, he has. His, his, his offensive line has been outstanding. And Melvin Gordon has found the holes, made the big plays when he's bounced outside, got to the second level, has always made guys miss. And you can see the speed, the burst, and his ability to get in into the end zone. 10 carries for 158 yards after starting with the fumble was pretty impressive. 15 yards per carry today for Gordon. That, by the way, is a career high for him in a half. His career total against Nebraska a couple of years ago, 216 yards. Nice play by McAvoy. Looks downfield. You always read high to low. No one open on the back end. Checks it down. Finds his guy. Not, finds his running back in the middle of the field here. Really nice play. Gordon sheds a would-be tackler. Spins away from another Gordon. Trying to get to the point. Pylon, he does. Fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Each one of them better than the one before. Twenty-one yards, leaving Falcons in his wake the entire way. And Melvin Gordon is showing all the skill here today, making guys miss, poor tackling in the backfield, but terrific balance by Gordon. You can always see his hips are always square, his feet are under his hips, which gives him the ability when people get at his legs to land on his feet square and then burst once he hits his feet back on the ground. 
11 carries, 179 yards, and a career-high four rushing touchdowns. He also had a key block on the McAvoy score and was the perfect decoy on the Arneson touchdown catch today. And we're not yet at the half. A couple of Bowling Green turnovers really turned the tide in the second quarter. And Wisconsin has taken full advantage. And Melvin has run his way back into the Heisman race. And the kicks it away. Gibbons at the five. Dropped it. And fortunate to get out across the 10, but they may start deeper. There's a flag down. Probably going to be a block in the back on Paul Sen. On the return, legal block in the back. Receiving team number 30. Half the distance to the goal. First down, Bowling Green. Well, in case you missed it, or if you just want to see it again, because it was that good, video of that last touchdown run from Melvin Gordon is now posted on the Sports Center app, available on your mobile devices and tablets whenever you need it. 311 yards, the ground and pound working effective today for the Badgers. And that will close out the first half. 41 to 10, Badgers. Despite the fact that they turned it over three times, it didn't hurt too much in command through the first two quarters. And a big first half for Melvin Gordon. 11 kicks.